smart game? Is that something you need? And how does the EVO 4 perform anyways? Well, let's find out. Hey, Julian Kraus here, and this is the EVO 4 from Audient. It's a two-channel audio interface, which has some pretty nice specifications. Of course, I thoroughly tested this interface, and this is what I found. But before we dive into my measurements, I'll quickly give you an overview of this device. On the front of the EVO 4, you can find an instrument input to directly plug your electrical guitar into. And you also got a quarter inch headphone jack. On the back, you can find the USB-C connection to connect your interface to a PC. I want to point out that despite the USB-C connection, it is USB 2.0. Nothing wrong with that, as the USB 2.0 connection is more than sufficient for external audio devices. Next to the USB connection, you got two balanced quarter-inch TRS outputs, and further to the right, you got the two XLR and TRS combo inputs. On the top of the EVO 4, you find a stepped rotary encoder, which controls multiple functions depending on what you have selected with the surrounding buttons. The dial is surrounded by quite a few LEDs, and these show you exactly where your settings are at, or they show you your audio level. This level meter is actually granular enough so that you can set your levels just by looking at the LEDs on the interface. And even though there are no level markings on the interface itself, I have overlaid them here. In general, when you're recording, you want your audio level to hit roughly around the middle of this level meter. On the left, you got two selector buttons, which let you select a channel, and afterwards you can set the gain with the rotary encoder, or individually activate the phantom power for the selected channel with the 48 volts button. If you press both channels selector at the same time, you can bind them together, so that the gain is always the same for both channels. This is a very nice feature to have if you're planning to make stereo recordings with two microphones. The big green button activates the smart gain feature, which I will show in more detail later in the video. And you also got a button which lets you determine how much direct audio from your mics versus how much audio from your PC you will hear. Lastly, you got one more button, which when pressed sets the dial to control the headphone volume. One thing I want to point out is that because the EVO 4 only has one rotary dial, you always have to select a function first with a button before you're able to set it with a dial. This is of course less convenient than having multiple dedicated knobs on the interface. Depending on how often you want to change different settings, this might or might not be a deal breaker for you. Now let's talk about the build quality. The housing of the EVO 4 is made completely out of plastic, and the sides have a bit of give to them when squished slightly. The buttons have a nice tactile feeling, but the rotary encoder has a bit of wobble to it. Overall, I think the build quality could have been a bit better, especially when you compare it to other interfaces with metal housings. By the way, it's actually pretty easy to open up the EVO 4. I don't recommend you do this with your unit, but I just wanted to show you that when I push in the back a bit, the top springs open. Yeah, I'm not going to go any further. Okay, I got the lid off, and this is what the lower part of the EVO 4 looks like. Nice to see that the plastic housing is completely shielded on the inside with some thin sheet metal. On the top you can see that there is a pretty thick metal plate. This also helps with shielding, and I presume that Audient chose this thick plate to give the EVO 4 a bit more heft. If you're curious, the EVO 4 uses an AKM AK552VN analog to digital converter. Enough about that, let's dive a little bit deeper into the specifications of the EVO 4 and check out its audio quality. The EVO 4 has a maximum sample rate of 96 kHz, and this means that it is able to record a wide range of frequencies, even above the human hearing range. You can see this in my frequency response measurement. As you can see, the EVO 4 has just a tiny bit of ripple caused by the anti-aliasing filter before it drops off sharply around 48 kHz. In the lower frequency range, there is a gentle roll-off, which is less than a decibel at 20 Hz. In practice, that's an audible. So in the audible range, from 20 to 20,000 Hz, the frequency response looks pretty good. And while I was on it, I also made a few distortion measurements of the mic input. Here you can see the harmonic distortion and intermodulation distortion graphs. 
If that's too technical for you, don't worry, all you need to know is that the distortion of the mic input is very low and this amount of distortion should be completely inaudible. Next up, dynamic range. Dynamic range is the difference between the strongest signal the interface can capture in comparison to its lowest signal, which is dictated by its noise floor. Ideally, the dynamic range should be as high as possible, because this way you can leave yourself more headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. I measured the EVO 4 and it comes in at 115.7 dBA weighted. That's an excellent amount of dynamic range, and with that the EVO 4 even dethrones the Moto M2, granted not by much. Okay, now it's time to check out the preamp performance of the EVO 4, and for that I will let the interface set its own gain with the Smart Gain feature. So let me show you how this works. First you press the Smart Gain button, then you select the channel you want to set the gain for, then you hit the Smart Gain button again, which starts to blink. Now speak into the microphone with your normal talking voice, or play your guitar or do whatever you want to record for about 10 seconds, and then the interface sets the gain to where it thinks it should be. I ran multiple test signals through the EVO 4 to find out exactly how it sets up the gain, and as far as I can tell, it sets it up so that the highest peak in the 10 second listening period peaks about minus 12 dBFS. So once the interface has set the gain, you're typically peaking between minus 12 and minus 18 dBFS. This leaves a nice amount of headroom, so your recordings don't clip, while simultaneously giving you a good strong signal to record. I found that the Smart Gain feature sets the gain pretty much exactly to where I would have set it manually. So all in all, I think the feature works pretty well. Okay, let's get back to the preamp noise. As you can see, I'm currently speaking into a Shure SM7B, which is directly connected to the EVO 4. The SM7B is of course known for its notoriously low sensitivity, which means that I have to use a lot of gain, which brings out the noise of the preamps. So this is pretty much a worst case scenario, and let me be quiet for a second so you can listen to the noise floor of this setup. As you could hear, the noise floor is very low, and that's reflected in my measurements. I measured the equivalent input noise, which lets you directly compare the preamp noise of different audio interfaces, and the EVO 4 comes in at minus 128.5 dBUA weighted. That's a very good value, and here you can see how it compares to other audio interfaces. And here is how it compares audibly against a few of these interfaces. Now, how about a Cloudlifter or Fathead? Is there any benefit in using these with an EVO 4? Well, technically you don't need a Fathlifter, because the preamps in the EVO 4 are so low noise that there is hardly any difference when using an additional inline preamp. That said, the maximum system gain of the EVO 4 is quite a bit lower than other interfaces, 41.4 dBFS at 0 dBU to be exact. I would have liked to see a number around 50 here. This means that when you max out the gain on the EVO 4, the recorded digital signal might be a bit low with low sensitive dynamic microphones like the Shure SM7B. That said, you can simply raise the gain slightly digitally in post. So from a noise perspective, you hardly gain anything by using a cloud lifter or fathead with the EVO 4. But if you're somehow unable to use digital gain in your post workflow, then using an additional inline preamp might help you to get your low sensitive mic to a proper working level. As always, I also checked the mic input impedance of the EVO 4. This shouldn't be too low, as this can change the sound of your microphone. The EVO 4 has an input impedance of around 3 kilo ohm, and this is very typical for an audio interface to have, so that's totally fine. Okay, let's talk about the quality of the audio outputs on the EVO 4. I measured the frequency response of the line level outputs on the back, and as you can see, it is very flat, even outside the audible range. And this is exactly what you want to see. Of course, I also checked the distortion, 
And as you can see at the maximum output, all harmonics are at least 100 decibels below the fundamental. That's arguably inaudible and a very good performance. And while I was on it, here you can see the graphs for intermodulation distortion with the SMPTE and CCIF methods. Again, all distortion components are very low, around minus 100 dB or lower, which is nice to see. Regarding the headphone output, I will go into much more detail in an upcoming video. But what I can say so far is that the headphone output on the EVO 4 has a pretty good audio quality as well. It is low noise, the frequency response is very flat and the amount of distortion is also very low. One thing that's not that great though is the output impedance of around 22 ohms. This can have an effect on your sound when you use low impedance headphones with the EVO 4. For a neutral sound, your headphones should have around 8 times the impedance of your headphone output. So if you're seeking a transparent audio quality, you should use headphones with around 150 ohms or more with the EVO 4. A good example for that would be the Sennheiser HD 58Xs. And yes, the EVO 4 has sufficient power to drive such headphones to a pretty loud listening level. Like in my previous videos, I also tested the round trip latency of the EVO 4. The round trip latency is the time it takes the EVO 4 to put out a signal and then record it again. You want this time to be as low as possible to not perceive any delay when for example using the EVO 4 as an amp simulator. On screen right now you can see the times I measured with a sample rate of 48kHz and different buffer sizes. And here are the times I got with the maximum sample rate of 96kHz. Keep in mind that which combination of sample rate and buffer size you end up using depends on your current project and the PC you connect your interface to. So these numbers are more a rough guideline to see what the EVO 4 is capable of. All in all, I can say that these are some pretty decent latencies. One more feature of the EVO 4 I want to point out is the loopback feature. It allows you to record the audio your PC is putting out and this can be very handy when you want to record the audio from your PC and the connected mic like it is often the case in a streaming setup. So what's my verdict? I think the EVO 4 is a handy little interface which is very portable. The multifunction rotary encoder works very well, though it is a bit less convenient to have just one dial instead of multiple dedicated controls. The audio recording and playback quality of the EVO 4 is excellent. It has low noise preamps, a high amount of dynamic range and low amounts of distortion on both in and outputs. I would have liked to see a slightly higher amount of maximum system gain, so that you can amplify low sensitive dynamic mics a bit more. I would have also wished for a lower impedance on the headphone output and the build quality could have been just a tiny bit better. The smart gain feature works very reliably and even though I still think you should learn how to set your gain manually, if you're just starting out it might be a handy feature for you. All in all, for the money, I think the EVO 4 is a solid interface. Okay, that's it for now. If this video was useful to you, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you didn't already do so. There are more videos to come, so we'll see you in the next one. That even rhymes.